Hey guys, how are you? Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys um, a basic intro on comping, which is pretty much composition where you add a whole bunch of elements together. Um, so you'd end up, like this is your base photo, and once you've kind of put everything together, you'll end up with something like this, um, where you're just kind of taking all the elements from different photos that you've taken, or stock images, or whatever the case is, adding different backgrounds, all of that, to get... Excuse me. <laughs> uh, to get the effect that you're looking for. Um, this works really well for game characters and stuff um, because you can really kind of make everything pop and make it look more authentic to the game, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so with this one, unfortunately, I lost the original recording, so I'm just going to re record everything. Um, and then I'll just kind of like run you over all the steps so far, one by one, and then kind of take it from there. Okay, so this was the base image I used. Um, this one, I mainly used the blade and the legs, I think. Um, and then from there I also added a different body, I changed the arms, I changed the face. Um, etc, etc. Okay, so the first thing I did was I used just the plain black paintbrush just with the paintbrush tool to paint over everything down here. Now you can see the little lights and the trees and everything were kind of poking through. So I just painted over them like that. Simple enough. <laughs> and then for this one, this is just the body I decided to use with it. Um, but before I did that, I did comp in the blade I wanted. I literally just, it was the same blade and I just made it a little bit bigger. Just to match up with this body. Um, <coughs> the hand I kept the same, just because it was easier. Um, oh no wait, this is a different blade. Yeah, I used a different blade that had a nice red reflecting on it from the, the light behind her um, and then just to fill out the background because this also this one here has a nice glow around it as you can see from my lovely assistant there blowing baby powder into the air <laughs> yeah then for the background I just also again went with the black paint brush and just fold that out um, and then because this blade wasn't long enough to go to the end over here I just chopped a little bit of it off and then just stretched it and warped it into that shape using puppet warp. Just just to like fill it out there so that it went to the end of the, the canvas. Um, then she wasn't happy with the face on this one. She wanted a different face. So this is the face I used. And then I just filled in the hair there a little bit as well. <coughs> and then also with this hand in the shot, you can't see the blue claws. So I added another hand, just to add that little bit of pop of colour. And then this one, let me just disable that. This was pretty much just this photo, and then I just turned it so that that red fog would just kind of go a little bit over the lecture. And then I just used the masking layer to hide the rest of it. Um, then I added a little bit of smoke in this corner over here, you check over there when I put it on and off it just adds like a little bit of a haze, it was very very soft, very subtle but it just kind of adds to the image and then here at the bottom I did the same thing um, and then looking at the photo here you can see it's not quite as vibrant and brightly red as on the other end so I just took from another image and just kind of added just a little bit of extra on the side. Um, I went around all the bits there because obviously the light's coming from behind her, so that's all you really need. And then this over here was just a white circle that I painted in with a soft white brush, and then I changed that's what it looked like. And then I just changed the opacity to overlay 
and then I masked out everything on the front so that it would only affect the background. Then just after that I did add a little bit more brightness to the background um, just to make it pop a little bit. Um, I cloned out some of the hair here because I felt it was kind of unnecessary. Oh, I actually took it out completely. <laughs> um, yes, I think I took it out from the head over here somewhere. Like if you take that away, I just cloned it without this layer here, which gave me this. And then that's how far I've gotten so far. Okay, from this point I'm going to start um, doing retouching and stuff, um, just to kind of bring the whole image together. So that's what we're going to do from now. So to do retouching, what I'll do is I'll duplicate the layer I want to retouch on, because I made a, a separate layer of all the layers together um, by going control if you're on Mac, it's Command-Alt-Shift-E, and if it's um, Windows, it's Control-Alt-Shift-C-E. Um, so then I'll have that one, and then I'll duplicate by just dragging it over to the new layer box over here. So I have two. Then you put the first one off, the top one off, and you go to the bottom one. Zoom in on your face, just so you can see the detail. Try to get it to fill the entire frame up. And then you'll go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And then you want to blur it just until you lose the detail in the skin, but not in her features, if that makes sense. So if you'll see there, it makes her, her features a bit fuzzy, but it smooths out her skin a little bit. And that's all you want to do. Kind of there. It's a good point. And you apply that, and you put your second one on. You go to it, and you go image. Apply image. Uh, set your blending mode to subtract. Set your layer to your first layer that you apply the Gaussian blur to. And then your scale will be 2 and your offset will be 128. So it'll kind of look like this, almost as if you put a pass on the image. And if you did it correctly, you'll see the detail in the hair, the eyes, the eyebrows, nose, mouth, but not really any detail in the skin. Like it's okay if it's a bit, but for the most part the skin should look clean because um, you don't want to put too much of the detail here because that'll make it harder to smooth out while still keeping your skin texture. Then you'll apply it and you'll change your blending mode to linear light. Then if you've done that correctly, let me just put some of the layers on over here. If you've done that correctly, when you put these two off, oh, Something is wrong here. Whoa. There's half a face missing. Let me put that face back. There we go. So if you've done this correctly, the amount of detail in the face shouldn't change. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bottom layer. And you get your clone stamp tool. The shortcut for it is S. You'll put your opacity to 20. You can just type it in like that. Or while you're busy working with it, if you type in the number, you'll see it'll change. Um, yeah, and then from there, just to the 20, we're just going to kind of clean up a little. You don't want to go overboard because you want the skin to still look realistic. Um, you don't want it to look like a painting. So we'll just go in and then just kind of smooth out any imperfections, any blemishes, um, un uneven skin tone, um, you know, sometimes if the makeup's not blended completely, you can use it for that. Um, yeah, it's just to kind of like smooth out the skin, make it look better. Um, and the best thing about this method is because all your, your detail is on your other layer, because you're pretty much separating your color from your detail. So you can smooth everything out on the bottom layer without affecting your your detail too much. Which is really handy for if you want your editing to look realistic. So yeah, just go slow, don't go overboard. 
you can always go back and fix more if need be. Then for this, um, and just got a few little surprise lines on our forehead, so we just want to smooth those out. And then for this one, because I'm repainting in the head sigil completely so it kind of glows, I'm just going to lighten this out. It, for the most part, does cover this up, so I'm not too worried about getting rid of all of it. Um, but I just do want to smooth it out just a little, so it's not too noticeable. There we go. See, when you put the detail on, the detail and the outline of it is still there. But I mean, if you look, it's already just, it just smooths it out just a little bit. You don't want to go overboard. Just a tiny bit. Um, I see I have changed her jawline shadow a little bit and her contour shadow over here, if you look at the difference. Um, so I'm going to go and put that detail back with um, my dodging and burning. Um, but what I want to do here, just to like even out the color just a little bit more, is I'm using the freehand lasso tool, just to select all the areas that don't have any detail in them. And I'm just going to push Command F and then Command D. The Command F pretty much takes your last filter that you used and reapplies it. So that's just the Gaussian blur that we applied earlier. That's just being reapplied. Um, yeah, that's just to kind of even out um, the skin tone a little bit. Just so that everything looks nice and smooth and pretty. So do you see her bags are nicely removed there. Um, like you can still see some of it but that's mostly just on the detail layer. Like if I take the detail layer off it's gone so we'll sort that out over there. Um, also another note, while you are busy doing eyes, um, it's not really too evident here because she doesn't really have a very big little puff under her eye. But you'll see with a lot of people they have a little puff just underneath the eye there that makes a little shadow and then underneath that will be an eye bag if they do have. When you're editing eyes, you never, ever, ever edit that out because that is the first sign that it's going to look very fake. So I'll usually retouch to just underneath it and then smooth it out, especially for like a close-up portrait um, where there's a lot of details on the skin and you pick up the little wrinkles and folds and everything of the skin. And just these little something over here. So I just want to smooth that out. I'm quite happy with how this layer looks now. So now I'm going to move on to the detail layer and for this one I'll put my opacity up to 70 like that um, because obviously now you don't want to it's not soft you don't want to be subtle because now with this because there's no detail there's no color in this layer it's just detail you saw is gray with the details on it so you want to catch them I'm actually going to put up to 100 for this and just get those little Thingy. So you're just pretty much replacing skin texture for one part of the face and like just applying it to a different part like that just to even it out. You want the texture to be nice and even without like removing her skin texture which helps it look a lot more realistic especially like with this because I was shot shooting in like almost complete darkness um, my ISO is a lot higher which means um, you get a lot more noise. And if you're just using your, um, let me show you what I mean. If you're working on just a single layer and cloning out, so we're doing it at 40. Once you start doing that, it blurs out the noise. I'm actually not doing this very well. But you lose your skin texture, firstly. And then secondly, you lose the noise. And that's like usually the first sign that a photo has been heavily edited, which is not necessarily what you want. So I do prefer this method because it does retain that noise. You can always use a, a noise removal tool. Um, I know Lightroom's is the best, but yeah, you can just use that to kind of take down the noise if need be, or even Photoshop's noise removal tool. But for this, I prefer doing it that way because it just retains all the details it doesn't damage them or destroy your photo because the key to, to editing is to be as non-destructive as possible ok 
Okay, just a little... Like, most of this is just actually little abnormalities in the noise that do happen from time to time. It's perfectly normal. So I'm just busy smoothing them out. And then you end up with something like that. That it doesn't do too much to alter a face. But it does smooth it out. And like I said, like you see it, it can, you just have to be careful to like stay within your tonal range. Just so you don't like flatten out a face like I have done here. Like you see it's, it's changed the shape of a jaw just slightly. And like that contour shit going on is kind of gone. The highlights have kind of flattened out. But that's okay because we can bring that back at least. So that's what I'm going to do next. I just want to quickly get some texture here on her shirt. So I'm just going to go in again with my brush at 20% opacity. The reason I do this is because you can build it up slowly and you don't alter the colors too intensely. Um, sometimes the texture can kind of get in the way, so you can switch it off, especially when you're first starting. It makes it a lot easier to kind of tell what effect is coming from which layer. So now we know this one is nice and smooth and clean. We can go to this one with our opacity up to 90 again. And then just pull the texture from other parts of the shirt so that we still have that same texture going on. And we can just take that little bit of distracting ribbing on the shirt away. There's a little mark here as well. So I'm just going to clean that up. And then just go through your whole image and just kind of figure out what you need to get rid of. Fix any little imperfections, any marks. Um, like here on the skirt, there's a couple of wrinkles. So I'm just going to quickly brush over those to smooth them out a little. Yeah, it's nice and smooth. Put your opacity back up to 100 for working on the texture layer. And then just do this. There we go. And then here I see some of the plants are poking through. Um, obviously you can't always get everything out first go. So for this, because of the texture differences, I'm going to use, if you click and hold down, it'll pull out. And you go to the healing brush tool. What's nice about the healing brush tool is you can select what area you want it to heal from and then heal it. And what it'll do is it'll try to match the, the colors and the textures for a lot less noticeable of a change. This is also really great for, for editing skin if it's not quite cooperating because it does do that sometimes. And then sometimes the clone tool can just be a big fat pain in the butt. So yeah, I just wanted to do that. And you go to your texture layer and you just do the same thing. And you just smooth out those textures. Roll all these leafy textures so that it blends in a little bit better. And if you'll if you'll notice, like with the clone stamp, it kind of follows, but with this, no matter where you go, it'll pick from the same spot again. Which is nice when you're working on large areas and you you have a really nice spot that you want to kind of keep. Let's zoom out just a little so I can see a bit better. Now there's some marks in there, so just quickly. This is really nice for large areas that have the same texture throughout. You can really go in and just quickly, very quickly change things without worrying about it, messing everything up. Yeah, so the retouch on this was really quick. Um, obviously, people with um, problematic skin or acne or... Um, Sometimes you miss a spot when you're doing your makeup, then it does take a bit longer, but if you're patient, you can get really great results. Okay, and then from here, I'm just going to paint in her hair a little. Um, there are a couple of strays, and then also her lace front did lift a little bit here in the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new layer. Um, the reason I do this is because it just gives you the option to kind of go back and forth um, without worrying about 
messing up what you've just done. Um, then I'll go to my brush tool. I'll use my brushes. Same trusty brushes I always use. I'll start with that one. And then to choose the color, just kind of get them down to about the size of the hair fibers, just a little bit bigger, because this is a pressure sensitive brush, so it does work best on um, a drawing tablet. I wouldn't recommend trying to use it without. Then you just kind of pick the color you want. So like, I usually like starting with the darker colors, just to kind of fill it in. Make sure your brush capacity is at 100. And then you'll just pick your color, and then just start brushing it in. Like I said, I do prefer to start with a darker color and kind of work my way up. I find I get it, it helps make it look a lot more natural. My brush is a little big, so I'm just making it a little bit smaller. Just filling in that. Pick a lighter color to help blend it out. And you just keep brushing until you're happy with how it looks. Um, another big perk about doing it this way is it really helps to blend um, your character into the background, especially if you're doing something on like a green screen or a gray screen and you're cutting it out and pasting it because sometimes the hair can look cut out and kind of angular if that makes sense. Um, so doing it this way kind of just helps to blend your, your edges and make the edges of your hair look more realistic. Um, you can use this also to add um, like the gel effect to the hair, like you see here the the red light kind of like reflected on the hair. So like say you want it to affect a little higher and to be more noticeable, you can kind of color pick from this area. I'm just going to do this on a new layer because it's not the look I'm going for. Yeah, you can you can use it to kind of just add to the effect, make it more intense. Or if you didn't have a backlight in the original photo, you can kind of just add more in. And just keep picking colors, seeing what colors are. You can add a couple of stray hairs just to help blend everything in a bit. And then they just look kind of natural, it gives a beautiful backlight effect. While I'm being fancy, let me be more fancy. <laughs> and then just keep keep colour picking as you go. I love adding stray hairs because it just really helps to bring everything together. I'm bringing really sloppy hair, but it's just to kind of show you the effect that you can get. Um, they end up with something like that, and it just gives a beautiful glow effect without too much effort, and it really helps you blend things into a background, especially if you're busy cutting something out and putting it onto something new. And then, yeah, that, that's just already really helping to cover that up so much better. I'm just going to go in, add a couple of highlights over this. And you don't have to stop there. Like I also like just going back, adding some of the stronger highlights throughout the hair just to give it a bit more contrast. I like to go around the edges just to neaten things up as well. Now I'm just changing my brush. Just wanna, there's a bit of a dark patch here and I just want to lighten it up slightly. So I'm just going through everything. Don't be scared to repick because obviously the further back you go, the, the dark it gets because the main light isn't hitting it so much. So you just keep just keep color picking as you go for the best effect. 
So nice with definition. Don't be scared to add some more shadows. Darkness bit up here, I feel like it's a bit too bright. And then there, I'm pretty happy with that. If you just kind of put it on and off, you can kind of see the other result. Like with this one, it's a much simpler hair retouch. Um, but yeah, it, it gives you the general idea. I have done a video in the past, so you can just kind of refer back to that one if need be. And for this, there's some stray hairs that I don't quite want there. So I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to paint them out a little. Oops. Those are okay. Just random little hair over here. So I'm just going to soften that up. And then go in with this tool just to get rid of the texture. Like, as a general rule of thumb, I usually like to keep a few stray hairs because over the years I have found it can make things look quite fake if they are. If the wig is like perfectly flawless, there's no strays, no anything, it can start to look overprocessed. So just taking those away, and then now there's a bit of a chunk in the head from where I took out that red one. So I'm just going to switch back to my brush, zoom in. And do a little bit more definition on this part. So it doesn't look so strange. And there we go. That's how I do it here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and do my dodging and burning. So to do that, to burn, you'll find as soon as you open the, the curves panel over here. It should. It usually looks like this. To get the smaller blocks, you push in your Alt, and you just click. It'll make your squares much smaller, so it's a lot easier to get accurate results. So what I'll usually do is I'll pull it down, directly down three blocks. Make sure it's sitting nicely on that little block. You can see it'll make the image very dark. That's what we want for burning. I'll take my brush, get it back to a normal, just your regular soft round brush. Make sure it isn't pressure sensitive. Um, put your opacity down to 11. And to toggle, you can just push Command I on Mac or Control I on Windows. Which is really helpful for if you're if you're stuck with where you want to put your, your highlights and shadows. You can use that to kind of toggle and see where you want to add more. So like when what I said previously, while I was doing the, the comping, it did change the shape of the jaw slightly. So we just kind of want to bring that back. So I'm just going to leave those two layers off for now, just so I can follow the shape. Make sure your brush color is white. And then I'm just going to go in there and put them back on. And you see it just kind of like brings that jaw back to where it was originally. And also I just want to intensify the contour bit. Not too much, just a little. And then I'm going to switch it back over to black just to soften a little and to get rid of the contour the burning, sorry, that I brushed into the hair there. 
and then that already it just kind of like helps you redefine the face to where it was. And then I'm looking at her lips here. I don't want to do too much. So I'm just going to darken just the inside there just a little bit. And just a little under the lip. And a little in the corners. Just to make it look a little bit more dramatic. And I'm painting down the side of her nose. Darkening up eyebrows just a little. Just so they look more expressive. And then I'm just going to enhance her makeup by following what she's done. So like here, she's got a very heavily cut crease going on, so I'm just following that. And then going in over the eye, just to define the outline, as this will really help to make, to bring out the eyes and make them look a lot more noticeable, if that makes any sense. Because you can see it makes quite a big difference, just doing these tiny little bits. I'm just checking if I want to add anything else. Um, I think I'm going to just define the hair a little bit more. The shadow, just by painting over it a little bit. And the contrast in that. And to make the silver look a little shinier. I'm just going over the black bits. Like so. Shading down the sides of her arm to make it look more rounded. And then also I'm gonna burn over here a little. Down the side of her hip. Down the front. Down the side of the panel. Down there. In the dark areas of the glove, those don't really need anything. And then for this, I'm gonna make it nice and fluffy. Just brush in there, change the opacity to black, set it up to 100%, and then just clean up the excess. Just so you get that nice effect. And zooming out. I'm going to go in here by her legs and then I'm just going to just kind of contour down the sides this is just to kind of define the shape a little bit and then this part, it should be black there we go and then I'm going to switch my curves over to the burning so you make a new curves layer put it up three you close that, and then this is what we're going to use to define everything. If you look at what the black's already done, it's just it's, it's just there to define everything. So now that we're going to go over to the white, I'm just going to start at her face again. Just to kind of show you the techniques. So usually what I'll highlight is, for this one, I just want to, because Diana's in her splash art, Everything is, is very glowy and defined. She And she has like all of the highlights on. So I'm just going to go back in. And then just kind of define that a little bit. Then I want to define here under her brow bone. Just to make it a bit more prominent. I'm just kind of go back and forth. You'll find sometimes that it's too strong, and then for that you can kind of just go down to 5%, just so it gives a, an even more subtle color change. And then we'll switch back to 11, and I'm just going to bring all the parts that I want to come forward forward. So, kind of to explain that, with how light and shadow works, if you want to push things back, you'll contour them, and if you want to bring them forward, you'll highlight them. So you kind of want to highlight her best features and use the burning just to kind of define everything else around it, if that makes sense. And then one thing I love to do is just to brighten up the eyes, just a little, just to help bring some focus to them. She's wearing the most beautiful grey lenses, but because of the lighting, 
they kind of did feel like they were disappearing just a little bit. So if you look at just what this has done, it really does help to open up the eyes and make them a bit more of a focal point. I'm just going back now because I feel like I made my curves, my all my dodging just a little bit too too dark. So I'm just going in with the black brush and just kind of brushing over it a couple of times. Just to kind of bring that down just a smidge. I feel like I want to also just darken the eyelids a bit so they don't look so closed off. And then I'm just going to go over the forehead just a little bit and over everything all at once. There we go. I'm just going to highlight the high points. So wherever there are already highlights is kind of a good place to kind of follow. So you're just kind of adding more contrast and more depth to the photo by doing this. Oops. Let's go over these parts that are highlighting nicely here. Pull it over this bit. And then all the little shiny bits on this silver arm over here really helps to make it really really pop then for this just want to brighten this just a smidge I'm going to highlight the gold part just a little bit and all the little bits that the light is catching on to really help make everything pop nicely and then I'm just going to fast forward through this bit so you guys don't have to watch me do this but yeah it's, it's a really simple process and you just kind of go with it you'll get the hang of it soon enough her legs are also very dark so I'm just going to add a bit more light in on these parts. I'm not too worried about being messy about this because the fog is in the background, so it's just going to light up the fog. I actually want to do that anyway, just to add a bit more dimension into what's happening over here. And that alone, as you can see, has already made a massive difference to the way it looks. And you can just kind of keep going and you just add your detail. Add your shadows. Then at this point, I feel like I'm pretty happy with how far we've got. Looking at the, the before and after. I haven't changed her face shape too much. I've kind of compensated for that. looks the same just a little bit smoother the contour has changed slightly but I'm not too worried about that you have to be very careful with editing that you don't make the person look like someone else you still want it to look like that person and once you're happy anything that you feel needs more color you can just add a new layer Grab the color you want and use that to saturate it. Like for instance with this blue, I want to pull it off here. Paint over them slightly. And then you change your opacity to color. And then I just want to go over to this side because I feel like the finger here has lost a bit of color due to the smoke and the red. Just gonna paint over it. And you'll find that it gives a lot more of the color it's supposed to be. <laughs> Her lenses are grey. I'm just gonna add the tiniest bit of blue over them. Just to kind of help bring everything together there. And I feel that this is this is all this needs so far 
there we go, I'm very happy with that. So then from here, I'm just going to make a new layer again, Command, Alt, Shift, E, or Control if you're using Windows, which pretty much just makes a new copy of everything. And then we're going to Money Collection, ColorFix Pro 4. And then for this, I have already got a filter for her. Let me just find it. There we go, Blood Moon Diana. It's a filter I was really happy with that I was using on my other renditions of this. But at the same time, I kind of really like the way this is affecting the light. It's giving a nice blue cast, but still keeping all the reds really really vibrant um, this seems to be giving it blue haze so then you can just kind of go through and kind of see which layers are affecting what parts I really like the way this looks but I don't want it as strong as it is so I'm just going to pull it down to about 6% just so it gives it a little bit Dark and light in center doesn't necessarily work on this one because it, it's just almost already almost completely black. And I feel like it's losing some detail in the edges, so I'm just gonna leave that one off. The graduated neutral filter also doesn't really work on this one. I feel like it's also taking away from a lot of it. That one's also unnecessary, I think. No, I like that one. Then the pro contrast is pretty much a contrast tool. Just kind of go through them and see what you like, what you don't like about it. You go back and forth. See, this just brings a lot more light into the photo. It's adding a lot more contrast. So I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to put that one on, as is. Um, usually what I'll do is I will use a filter for one, save it, and then for every photo I'll just use the same filter and kind of tweak it as I go to get the effect I want. And then while this is saving out, I'm just going to hop over to here. Open up this PSD because I do want the little sigil from there because I'm not going to repaint it. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> but I did paint it um, on the original one and then like I've just been kind of dragging and dropping it because it's something that you can kind of distort a little bit to, cha um, to fit any facial angle changes in that. Um, and you just kind of resize it to fit over her current makeup sigil. And you just blend it in. See, as you can see with this one as well, it's kind of the same concept. In this one, I just replaced the hand and I added a lot more smoke into the background just to fill it out nicely. The smoke, some darkness, some more smoke, some more smoke. I replaced a little poof to make it bigger. This was my burn layer, this was a dinner layer, and this was my retouching layers, just to remove any distractions. There's my head sigil. Let me just quickly go through that. Then there was some more, I did some more burning, some more dodging, some curves to make things brighter. This was just some red on a color layer just to get rid of the green in the grass. And then this was to do the leg things. That was just this, the, the rough scratch. That was the shape I eventually settled on. And then these are just my layers to build it up. And you end up with something like this. But yeah, it's pretty much the same concept. So I'm just going to pull that to the side and grab these layers and pull them over. Then I can close this image. It's not needed and you don't need to get your Photoshop running slow. It's the last thing you want. 
And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this up. She is facing opposite way. And this is just a little hand painted sigil. I'm going to flip it to fit this photo a little better. And just flip it horizontally. And then I'm just using Command T to resize and move this around. Get in a position you're happy with. And then we're going to go to edit. And I'm going to use the perspective tool. Just to kind of get my perspective just right to fit this image. I'm just going to go into my folder here. I'm just going through all my layers that I've kind of built up over here. See which ones work and which ones don't for the specific image. I can feel it has a lot more dimension in this one without that. So I'm just going to go to that layer, put the opacity down just so it has like a little bit of that color in there. Gonna move it up just a smidge. And there we go. I'm just gonna grab one more curves layer, bring it up again for burning and dodging. In virtual layer, Cobra brush at eleven percent. And then just kind of go in and define. Which every area you feel need defining. I'd also like to just make a new layer. Grab some of this red. I'm just going to color pick. Grab it there. Just make it a little bit more red. Kind of just paint over. This part, part of a little scythe thing. Push it to opacity to, to red, sorry, the blend mode to red. Oops. And then just keep going until you're happy with what you have. Just tiny little adjustments from here. But I'm pretty happy with the way everything is looking right now. Just maybe add a bit more red into these clouds. Maybe these ones here at the bottom. I'm going to use burn layer just for final details. Just kind of look where it's kind of lacking or if there's any distractions. The button did bring out some of the detail of the trees, so I just want to kind of soften those up a little. Just a little bit more definition over there and over there. And then my final layer is to just, or second final, put two up on the last blocks. Then the one at the top, you push to the left. And the one at the bottom, you push to the right, so you get an S-shaped curve. Just make sure that your line stays in the middle, so that your contrast is even. And that's just to add a little bit more contrast. You can mess with the opacity a little. That just like really brings out your blacks and your whites, just to make everything look well put together. I'm going to make a new layer with the Command-Alt-Shift-E. Command 
as we did before. Then I'm gonna go to filter. Just for zoom in a little so you can see your detail. And go to filter, sharpen, and shop mask. And you just add a little bit. It just make brings everything together. And that is how you go from this to this. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, as usual, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm always happy to help you guys out with anything. Bye!